Good morning, folks. Welcome. I'm Pastor Gary Coleman from First Baptist Church in East Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, welcome to our 12 noon Tuesday uh, devotion. I enjoy each time we come together and we have the opportunity of opening up the Word of God together. And it is my desire to be a blessing to you today. Uh, we are very excited. We have gotten word and we are making uh, plans for coming together, opening our church, uh, being together physically for the first time in quite some time, May the 31st at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., uh, we look forward to it. I will continue this week and next week to live stream devotions and uh, Bible study, but uh, we do look forward to being together. I'd ask you today, if you have a Bible, to open up uh, to the first Psalm, and we are going to read verses one through six, and I've entitled this brief devotion, choices. Uh, if you think about visiting with us on May the 31st, uh, we are going to have uh, a new series beginning that will be entitled Welcome Home. And I can't think of a more fitting title than that for a new series as we come back together. The first Psalm, verses one through six, which just happens to be the entire psalm as we look at choices today. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. <clears throat> And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Father, bless your word to us today. Uh, we look for our faith to be increased. We ask for your Holy Spirit to drive home the word of God so that we could learn some things and look up and, and make decisions and make right choices ultimately. Thank you now for being with us. We ask it in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. Well, I'd like to start off this afternoon by reading a poem to you that's written by Robert Frost. Usually I take uh, the last part of the poem at times when I preach uh, funerals and uh I'll talk about that a little bit in a few moments, but let me read this poem to you by Robert Frost. It says, two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And being one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads unto way, I doubted that I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. 
Two roads diverged in a wood. I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The title of that poem, The Road Not Taken, by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled, and it has made all the difference. I lift up that portion of scripture, sometimes even at difficult times like funerals, because uh, we have a choice to make, and it's not as complicated as you think. God simplifies. God lays out two ways in his word for us to travel, two decisions that can be made, two families that we can be a part of it, two destinations, two destinies, if you will. And I want to simplify it for you today as we think on this topic called choices. I guess one thing that comes to mind is Matthew 7 and verse 13, which talks about a narrow road that leads to life. And the Bible says, few there be that find it. And then it speaks about a broad road that leads to destruction. And it says, many there be that go in thereat. Most people are on the broad road that does not lead to life, and very few people are on the narrow road that does lead to life, and it is all a matter of choices. Listen, there are far fewer gray areas than you might think. Oh, there are plenty of distractions to take us away from the simple choices, but God loves you enough that he has made the choices simple and exclusive. Joshua, military genius of the Old Testament, declared to a group straddling the fence in Joshua 24 and verse 15, Joshua said this, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers, which were false gods, that served on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see, ultimately, we have to determine what choice we will make for our individual life, for our individual families, we must make the right choices. We cannot cause someone else to make the choices that we wish they would make. We have to make the right choice and hope that people will follow our example. So friend, two choices, two decisions, two paths, two considerations, two ways. My goodness, choose carefully. Now, friends, God loves us. And as I've stated already, realistically offers two choices, two realities in Scripture. We complicate things. Hopefully this first psalm will clear things up and help to simplify things for you as we look at it this morning. So notice with me first off today, two types. It always seems to be that way in the word of God, that God parallels two different ways of doing things, the right way, the wrong way, one family, another family, light darkness, the righteous, the wicked. It always seems that God parallels those two things because those two things are always going on. Now, verse 1 
says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The comparison, verse 4. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. So verse 1, the blessed or the happy, the godly, the believers. On Wednesday night, we are studying um, Improving Your Serve by Chuck Swindoll. And Chuck Swindoll uses Matthew 5, verses 3 through 11, part of Christ's Sermon on the Mount, to drive home eight principles, which we call Beatitudes. And they're conditional. God tells us that if we will do certain things, we will be happy. And it's no different in Psalm 1 that this godly individual is happy or blessed because of living and because of choosing a certain way. And I think that's pretty exciting as we look at this devotional on choices out of Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6. Verse 4, it says, The ungodly are not so, but are they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. <clears throat> now understand, the ungodly are not necessarily bad people according to our estimation, but their choices are wrong. Simply to leave God out of your life, simply not to contemplate his word and his choices for you is a wicked, evil thing because he's the creator. He's the designer. He is the one who breathed life into man and he became a living soul. We are accountable to him whether we acknowledge it or not. And life is all about choices and free will and choosing to bow the knee and choosing to confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. So secondly, two ways. There are always two ways of doing things. Again, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You're going to see a progression here. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. So that's the godly. That's the one who is blessed or happy because they're living right and they've made the right choices. And again, there are not so many variables or gray areas. It's quite simple. But we are the ones that complicate things. Verses 4 and 5, the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Well, what's the result of that? Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So let's start out with the blessed. We're making the comparison because of choices. He walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. I have given our church an illustration concerning this portion of scripture. Imagine walking through the mall. That might uh, get more exciting now that things are opening up. But imagine walking through a crowded mall and there's something going on. Maybe there is a school band playing 
or maybe there is a drama skit going on, or maybe something special is going on with children or, or pets, and you casually walk by, and first off, it gets your attention as you walk by. So you pass it, you go to some other stores, you come back and you pass the same thing again, but this time you stop and you stand and you contemplate what's going on. And you become so engrossed in what's going on, eventually you look around for a place where you might sit down. And finally, you sit. Well, understand, this is the progression of sin and the blessed or the happy who have chosen wisely. It says they don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly that first step. They don't stand in the path of sinners, which is that second step. And they most certainly don't make the choice to sit in the midst of scorners and become one of them. Because once you sit down, you are a part of what is going on. Now, the ungodly, it says, are like the chaff. Now, what is the chaff? Well, it's a farming, a farming term. Um, the outer covering of wheat was called chaff. The outer covering of any grain was called chaff and had to be removed on the threshing floor. It was worthless. Basically, as it was scraped off, as it was separated, it simply would be burned or it would simply blow away and dissipate into the air. God says that's what the ungodly are like. They are like the chaff, which will blow away. And the result of the ungodly, they shall not stand in the judgment. And you might get excited and say, well, that means they won't be judged. No, friend, that's not what it means. It means they will not be able to stand in the judgment. They will not be able to stand up and bear the judgment. You see, friends, when you and I, if you are in Christ Jesus or judged, you'll be able to stand. You'll be able to endure. You'll be able to go on because of the blood of Christ and because you believed in Christ and what he did for you on the cross of Calvary. Also, the ungodly that are like chaff will not be able to be a part of the congregation of the righteous because they are not in Christ. So it's important for us to understand that. Always two choices. Always two decisions, always two paths, two ways, two determinations. Choose carefully because God gives us this illustration over and over again. Here's the godly. Here's the ungodly. Here's the result of the godly. Here is the result and the ramifications of those who are ungodly. There aren't as many choices as you think. There are only two families. There are only two destinations. There are only two destinies. There are only two ways of truly doing things. We may try to make ourselves feel better by giving ourselves many choices, but that is not from the mind of God, which brings me to my third and my final point. One, perception. God's verse six, the last verse of this first psalm says this, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I wish I could put it a different way. 
I wish I could give it a different spin. I wish I could give it a different ending. But this is God's word. This is God's story. This is God's path. And we must look up and we must decide what road will travel. Robert Frost again. Two woods diverged out of the woods and I chose the one least traveled and it has made all the difference. Have you chosen the road least traveled, the narrow road that leads to life and not the broad road that leads to destruction? I pray that you have. I always share with people in our church, do what you do for an audience of one. I've learned a long time ago as a pastor, I can't please everyone. I can't say the right thing to everyone. But I better make sure that I'm choosing properly according to what God thinks. Acts 4 verses 19 and 20. Peter and John worked a miracle and they got in trouble for it with the religious leaders. The religious leaders told them they needed to be quiet about Jesus. They needed to stop sharing about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Especially the resurrection was bothering them. But Peter and John said that it was better to obey God than to obey man. So the choice I want to make is God's choice. The perception I want to adhere to, and I hope you want to adhere to, is God's perception, God's desire, God's choices. What God says will make me happy and enhance my life and the life of those around me. Joshua, choose you this day whom you will serve. And he goes on to say at the end, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Friends, look long and look hard at those two paths that Robert Frost described in his poem. Do you need some help? Well, then look up and allow God to choose for you. It'll make all the difference. Verse three, the blessed, what will they enjoy? Well, it's a good place to end because I like ending on the positive. They will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. When the drought comes, they will be sustained because their roots will reach deep down into the soil and draw from the river. Their fruit will flourish and be bountiful in its season. Their leaf, their endeavors, shall not wither. Whatsoever you attempt in the Lord shall prosper according to his purposes. Making a choice is a very important vital issue for us. Perhaps today you are not in Christ and you think there are many ways to heaven. My goodness, friend, if there were many ways to heaven, why did Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, have to die? The Bible says neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. You see, Christianity is exclusive. There are many ways, even though we like to pretend there are. Even though that lie is whispered in our ear, that as long as you're sincere and you're doing something, or you have some sort of higher power, 
you'll be okay. That is not the perception of God. Friend, if you don't know Christ, contact us. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the ways thereof are the ways of death and separation. I want to know what God says. When I came to Christ at 18 years of age, finally I decided I'm here for a purpose. I've been created. I know there's a God. And what does he want from me? I want to make right choices. I want him to be in control of my life. I want him to designate what's best for me. Will I find that looking to the right or looking to the left or seeing what the popular opinion is? No, I will find that out from God's word. Friends, choose carefully. Consider long and hard, but remember, there are only really two choices in reality that can be made. Make sure that you make the decision that God tells you is right. Ponder, consider, meditate on that first psalm. And friend, be like a Joshua. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God bless you, friends. Again, we look forward to opening May the 31st with a new series entitled Welcome Home. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I so look forward to being with you toe to toe in just a few short weeks. Have a good afternoon.